Welcome to Nerf and Turf. I'm Andrew, and on today's episode of Nerf and Turf, I'm going to be talking to you about the Nerf Strife. So here I have my two Nerf Strives. They're the original blue color, um, and they've both been heavily modded. So I wanted to talk you through some of those because this Nerf Strife is one of the most highly modified Nerf Blasters. So I just wanted to talk you through that. Uh, heads up before I get into that is that I do have a... Um, full rewire guide for the Nerf Strife, and I'll go ahead and throw that link in the description, and then at the end of this video, I'll make it one of the boxes that if you click on that, it'll take you to that video. So you can just see how I rewired this Strife, um, just to get the basic overview. But today I'm gonna be talking about more of the modifications that I've done to this. So I'm gonna start with my first Strife. So here I have my first strife that I modified. And so, as you can see, I've got my Nerf hollow sight and my um, muzzle breaker condenser, I, I don't know what I called it. It's a compressor, I think is what I called it, um, that are both on my Etsy store. And so I'll go ahead and take those pieces off for now. And we'll just discuss the modifications, mostly the internal mods. And so, but before we get there, I'm gonna talk about the three triggers because I've redone all three of them. The main trigger is now a full 3D printed part that's just got a very nice thin trigger to it. And it's got a catch in it so you can feel more of the pull once the, um, the pusher mech is pushing forward. There's a very distinct click when it goes forward, not just, it's, so it's not like it's not well lubricated or anything. It's just that there's a very interesting part of it that just has a very distinct click whenever the pusher mat goes forward, which I enjoy. It helps me make sure I'm just getting the shots off that I want. And then the um, rev trigger is the Bobolo. I, Bobololo, I guess this is his name, I don't know. He's a YouTuber that makes stuff and it's a fantastic rev trigger there. And then um, the magazine release is from Out of Darts. Also, fun fact, in Texas, it's actually below 100 degrees today. I believe today it's only at about, it got to 99 today. So it's awesome and I'm outside again because it's cool out here. Because yes, in Texas, 99 is considered cool. Um, wherever else you are in the world, have fun not being in the hundreds because it's been 110 most of the week. But I am quite the favorite of all the mosquitoes. So bear in mind if I'm just randomly scratching, I blame the mosquitoes. All right, so the other external mod I have here is the thumb screw. And so it's just a very easy screw that you can take off so that you don't have to get a screwdriver out every time you're getting in the battery tray. In here I have two IMRs and two dummy batteries. Um, and that's getting me, that's about 7.4 volts, which is pretty good. Sometimes I put three in there when I really want to get some hard hits, but I did an indoor war recently and I kept it to two IMRs just because I didn't want to impale my friends with foam and plastic. That's not very nice. And then on the inside, I've got a full rewire. And then the fun part, I have the original Strife cage in here, but the really fun part is that the two motors that I have in here are Fanger revamped. Now, these motors are generally for a 2S um, or a 3S LiPo battery, and I'm using IMRs in here. And, and before you freak out and say, Andrew, but those will explode and overheat. Yes, I understand. Um, so I, I mod I monitor it very closely just to make sure it's not overheating, that I'm not pulling too much voltage out of it to damage it and that kind of thing. So I keep my eye out on that, but let's just listen to the rev. And that's just with two IMRs in there. And so if I add the third IMR, it's just screaming and it really hurts my ears. So I generally keep it to two, especially for an indoor battle where surprise is important. Um, and that one is just so much fun to shoot. It's shooting really hard. And the nice thing about the motors is the RPMs are so high that it doesn't get bogged down. So if I continuously fire it, you don't hear the motor get tired and push the darts less uh, with less FPS. Instead, it keeps a very constant FPS a very so you can keep a high rate of fire without the motors lagging which is really nice all right let me throw these attachments back on and then let's fire off a mag so I've got uh, just about every dart under the Sun here and I'm just gonna fire it against this wall over here <laughs> so much fun. Um, so I fully freaked out my wife because that's our game room where we watch TV. So I love you, Hannah. 
Um, so that's one mag out of there. And I don't know if you could tell, but the motors kept it a very um, similar RPM as it's ejecting the darts. And so you couldn't hear any bog down, which was really sweet. Um, you know, I have no clue what FPS that's truly firing. We're in the hundreds, um, not high hundreds, probably 100, 120-ish area out of there. And so it's quite, quite, quite fun with that. And as you could see, the muzzle here wasn't affecting the dart flight at all because it's so wide that it can't stop the dart. So that's really sweet. All right, let's move on to my other strife. All right, next I have my second strife which I am excited to talk to you about this one because I've got quite a few of my parts on here. I've got my um, small iron sight right here, and I love that one because it clicks in very nicely. It doesn't go anywhere, and it's very simple. You don't even have to use it. It doesn't really get in the way because you don't normally use your sights in Nerf. It's mostly for the aesthetics. It's just so small that I know it's there and it's not getting in the way. And then I have my new and improved muzzle brake that's a lot thinner um, and a little bit longer, but it still doesn't impede the dart flight, which is sweet. And then I have my front foregrip that I recently printed. This is, I think, my second variation of this, just to make sure I have the correct length and that it snaps in there. Um, so I've got that foregrip there that I'm really proud of. And then I've got a magazine release here that I made and printed. All these parts were printed by me. Um, really excited about that. Again, this one has two IMRs in it and then two dummy batteries. Um, it's got this stock motors, the stock flywheels, but then the exciting part on this one is that I 3D printed a crush cage. And so I've got a 42 millimeter crush cage in here. And so what that does is the flywheels on a normal um, cage are separated so much that when the flywheels hit the dart, they're just barely touching the dart and ejecting it. And so they're farther away. So they hit the dart, but they're yeah, I'm trying to figure out a good way to explain this. So a normal flywheel cage, the flywheels are set farther apart. So as they're spinning, they hit the dart and they're barely touching the dart as they spin and then they eject the dart out that way. And so that's the normal way a flywheel cage works. And then this one is a 42 millimeter flywheel cage. So the flywheels are closer together. So as they spin and the dart is pushed into them, they crush the dart a little bit because it's a little bit smaller than the actual size of the dart. And so it crushes the dart a little bit so it gets a better grip, it gets better traction, and then they continue to spin and eject the dart out. And so without changing the motors, without upping the voltage any, you can get extra power because you're getting extra crush, or extra traction on your dart. The fear with that is that it bogs the motors down. So since these are stock motors in here, when I do that, I can hear the motors getting tired as they run low on power and their RPMs drop. And then once I give it a break, the RPMs shoot right back up. And so that's the interesting thing about the crush cage because it's taking more energy to crush that dart and eject it out. And so this blaster, I'll do another video on that, but this blaster I used for an HVZ event recently and it was phenomenal. I didn't have any problems. It wasn't shooting so hard that I was impaling my friends. I think I hit a friend in the lip and he had a bloody lip. I'm sorry, Tobias, but um, he lived and he had a great time. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this shooting off a magazine. So again, an under everything under the sun magazine of darts. And this is again, the 42 um, millimeter crush cage that I 3D printed myself. So I'm really proud about that. So it's a lot quieter. I don't know if you could hear that, but the motors do start to bog down a bit as um, you amp the fire rate up. Also, um, the flywheels are grinding a little bit on the cage, so I still need to refine this cage before I'm gonna sell it to anybody. But the flywheels grind a little bit and they catch on the cage because it's an open cage. Um, but it's really working beautifully and it's a lot quieter than my other Strife since it has the stock motors in the crush cage, so it's quieter. So you wouldn't expect it to shoot hard. And then it shoots so hard it shot the cap off that dart. That is hilarious. Um, but no, I really love this blaster. This one I've been using a lot of. Again, this one I used for HVZ because it's very small. And again, um, this barrel attachment that I printed, it didn't affect the, the flight of any of the darts because it's wide enough that it avoids that. 
but it's still a pretty thin one, all things considered, but it's just wide enough that the darts don't catch in there. So that's one of the reasons I love this blaster. All right, well that was just a quick video on the two strives that I've done a lot of modification to. Essentially all the parts on these blasters I 3D printed myself and then fit on here. And so you can check out that Etsy store if you're interested in any of those parts. Or if there's a part I mentioned here that's not on my store, comment below if you want that soon so I can know to prioritize that part so I can start working on it and get that on Etsy pretty soon for y'all. I think a very odd thing for me is I am what Coop772 calls a Springer peasant. I love my spring-powered blasters, but for some reason these strives really piqued my interest. Um, the more I modded them, the more I did work on them, I realized these electric blasters are so much fun to mod and the performance is really there that you get to enjoy all the work you put into them. However, um, you know, you're worried about batteries, you're, you're thinking and overthinking and something electrically could go wrong at any moment, your blaster's dead. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Although I still am a Springer peasant, uh, the flywheels are getting to me. I, I am loving working with these. Hey, well, get on out there and nerf your turf. Have a blessed day. Bye bye